Greetings. Welcome to the Yang style long form Tai Chi course. I'm Michael Gilman. And today we have a special class. Uh, we're going to be working with the Tai Chi Saber, one of the major weapons of the Yang style Tai Chi form. Um, the Saber is a beautiful, beautiful weapon and a great training tool. And as you see, as we go through today, as we go through this lesson, uh, I think you'll uh, see, uh, gain some respect and knowledge about the Chinese weapons. Now, uh, the saber was probably most popular uh, in between, say, the 14 to the uh, 18 through the 1800s until guns sort of took over. And the saber, there's, there were basically three major weapons, the saber, the sword, and the spear or staff. The saber is a single-edged weapon, which means that only one side of the saber is sharp. The other side is dull. And the other side is used for blocking and for pressing. The saber is a very, was a very generally used by the bigger people as a sort of first line uh, uh, to sort of cut down the infantry. To, to They were the first line of defense. Then back in the back in the troops, there would be the uh, double-edged sword people, and finally the open hand people. But um, this weapon is a is a great training tool because it's it's fairly heavy, and we can use lots of large sweeping movements as we practice with this 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 weapon. Um, this particular uh, saber, these, this is a very old saber from probably from the middle 1800s. And as you can see, it is long and slender. So this particular weapon, and it's not particularly a long weapon in and itself. It's slender and pointed. It looks almost like a sword in its shape. You can see the round, there is a sharp point and then this edge is sharp. But back here, you can see it's very flat here, big at the bottom, and tapers to a small edge. So <clears throat> the, parts, the parts of a saber are the blade, the guard. The guard is here to, obviously, guard your hand. It's cupped. Most of them have a cupped shape. Some don't, but most of them have a cup shape in case the, the blood of the opponent would were run down. It would be caught here and not uh, get into the hands to make it slippery. And also, most of the techniques, as I will be explaining, most of the techniques for the weapons uh, have to do with cutting the hands uh, and wrist. That way, you could you don't have to kill the opponent. You can just keep them from carrying their weapons. So you'll see lots of the techniques have to do with uh, the wrist, cutting the wrist techniques. Or also the leg, the forward leg. There's a lot of techniques that have to do with attacking the forward leg since it's closest to me and furthest away from the center of the opponent. OK, so then there's the guard. Then there's the handle. And the handle, in the Chinese system, the handle is, is held with one hand. The Japanese swords were held with two hands. But in the Chinese system, uh, we use the other hand because we hopefully are, get in tight with a lot of the techniques. And so we use the other hand for various things. And so it only needs to be uh, to accommodate comfortably your hand. At the very end of the handle is what's called the pummel. And this is generally uh, hardened because this thing, this part is used, when you get in close, is used to, for techniques, for either hitting the temples, hitting the ribs, and things like that. Also blocking, which I'll show you in a minute. 
So uh, those are the parts of the saber. We do not ever, of course, touch the sharpened edge. And of course, you don't want to touch the blade itself on the blade because then it would tend to rust it. We do use, uh, use this outside or back edge here for pressing techniques, which I'll show you in a minute. Okay, so this is one style. Also, you'll notice if you see running along this edge, you'll see grooves. In this case, there are three grooves in this particular saber. <clears throat> and these grooves are called blood grooves. And it's the same reason. If you were to stick this in something, if these grooves weren't there, what would tend to happen is it would create sort of a suction and you wouldn't be able to withdraw it very easily. So these grooves create a place for the for some sort of uh, interchange of uh, air and fluids, so you can then extract it. And, um, I mean, it all sounds terrible, but, um, you know, this is, this is what traditionally people defended themselves with. Nowadays, we use it for exercise, and hopefully I've, you know, hopefully nobody would ever use it for anything but that. Okay, so uh, Stephanie, if Stephanie would come in here a minute, Stephanie's going to help me uh, show you some of these techniques. Now, she's brought in a couple of other sabers. Now, let me show you this one. Now, the name, the traditional name for, for this weapon is called a dao, D-A-O, dao, which covers, it's sometimes called a saber or sometimes called a broad sword or a knife sometimes called a knife. Now you can see the difference between these weapons. This one, this broadsword, is very heavy. It must weigh, oh, six or seven pounds. And you can, and, and you can notice, uh, you get a close-up of this, you can notice all the blood grooves on this one. There's four blood grooves on this one. And you just notice the difference in shape. Now this back edge here, there's this curved back edge, which is sometimes sharpened for back techniques. In this case, on this one, it isn't. But it kind of looks a little bit like a scimitar, doesn't it? And um, it has a very big guard because uh, it's a big weapon. And it has a longer handle. You notice the difference here in the length of the handle. This handle is longer because you need a more of a counterbalance since the blade is so heavy. You need more weight out here in this uh, area. Plus, you see there's this big metal thing here which also adds weight to help counterbalance the weight of this other saber. So this is what, would, what we would call a broad sword and this would be called a saber. Yeah. Now, the last one that uh, Steffi has here is another very old weapon. This one is very old and it's quite different. If you notice the handle here, you see the other ones did not have any particular guard. There was just a little round cup. Here you see there's a protection for the fingers because there's a lot of cutting going on to the fingers. There's also this uh, edge here, this bar, and what this does is you can catch the opponent's uh, sword and wrench it out of their hands with this. This one is interesting. There's a curved pattern on the back. This one has two blood grooves and it's short. Now this one is very short. Now if we could look at the difference in size here. You see how much shorter this is? Can you see that all right? Yeah, okay. Um, and so much, uh, so much uh, broader. Uh, this one's so much broader. Now, but you see, look how long the handle is of this little one here. And it has a big ring on the outside. Now, this one is used mostly for close-in work. If somebody were, say, uh, you know, if it was if the fight was going to be inside a room or, or it was going to be at close quarters, something like this would be good because you're protected. You've got a short, you've got a short lighter weight weapon. And this big rounded edge is very, very good for smashing things, hitting things, right? 
And a lot of times they would have a scarf. You would notice a scarf hanging off of this to distract the opponent. Some of the techniques have to do with distraction. And this has a wooden, wooden handle, and it's all one piece. Okay, so um, let's, uh, okay, if you take these, can you get those okay? Okay. Now, the, the, the beauty of the, the, the weapons, the forms nowadays, is to help the student bring the chi outside and down out of the body into something. In this case of these sabers, to bring the energy down to the edge of the saber. In Tai Chi, it's the same thing. If, if, Sam, uh, if I was punching something, I need the energy in this structure. And in the weapons forms, I need the energy down where the work is going to be being done. So um, it's a beautiful training tool. It's very good. It's very good. Uh, the weapons forms, because the weapons, particularly the saber, is fairly heavy, it causes a, a build, nice buildup of strength, uh, good, good for the um, tendons and ligaments, and very, very good for developing chi. For developing internal energy, it's sort of like weightlifting. Weightlifting tends to do all those sorts of things too, and in um, Taiji, of course, um, you know we use this kind of an ancient weapon, which makes it kind of interesting and fun. Okay, um, so uh, generally speaking, most people, most students use wooden when they start off. They use wooden sabers or aluminum sabers, and what you'll, Steffi, will be bringing in these aluminum sabers so that. Uh, when we do, I want to demonstrate some of the applications, we won't bang up these nice old weapons. So um, I guess I'm ready to, why don't you come on in here again, Steph? Okay, thank you. So here, this is a, this is a kind of a traditional uh, practice weapon. It's all one piece and it's aluminum. It has two blood grooves in it. it. has a guard that doesn't have a cup, but it's just there to help guard you. and. Uh, it has a little cotton handle, and there's an end here so that a, um, a, a scarf could be hung off this. I don't like, personally, I don't like the scarves. They, uh, a lot of people really like them. I don't like them to practice with, but they have them. It's kind of showy. Okay, so Steffi and I are going to, uh, it's going to help me demonstrate first some of the applications, some of the applications for this form. Now, so you'll get a chance to see how this, how this works and sort of the philosophy of the saber. Then I will demonstrate the form and talk through it. And hopefully you'll be able to look for these various techniques and see how they fit into the form. And given the correct amount of time, given that we have time at the end, we'll do some drills. Steffi, I'll bring Steffi back. To, we'll do some drills and show you how you can use a training partner to practice these things. And I'll also then show you some um, solo practice drills. Okay, so let's start out um, with some uh, basic, simple techniques. Now, please do not, do not just play crazily with weapons. I know kids tend to, you know, oh, okay, you know, aha, I get to smash everybody. Now, this is not a toy. This is a training tool. And even this aluminum thing that is not sharp at all can poke out an eye, it can hurt, it can break a bone, and it can cause a lot of problems. So please, do not play with this, particularly in the beginning when you're learning. Go slow, go easy, and as you progress, then your speed can, can increase. But always be mindful uh, that this can hurt, even if it's a wooden one, even if it's one, a practice um, with, uh, we use the, like a dowel cover, covered with pipe insulation to practice with sometimes. Even that can poke out an eye. So you, you must be careful, please. All right? So um, now, the way that we generally hold it, Steffi is holding, okay, if you say, Stephanie is holding hers just down to her side, and, which is a relaxed uh, way that a lot of people hold their sabers. 
In the form, when we're doing the form, we hold the saber to our side like so. And um, this is the way we're going to start out our saber work, just by holding it like this. But I won't, I don't, and now Steffi's changing it too. But, okay, many techniques you'll notice have to do with what we call hiding the saber. You'll notice as we go through the form, as I go through the form, many of the techniques, so for instance, if I am facing Stephanie, say you're a little bit over here, so you're sort of in this camera range. Now, if I'm standing like this to Stephanie, she, it, she would have a difficult time really focusing in. She, she knows I'm holding something, but particularly if this hand is, were to be out, she's not sure where exactly it is. She knows approximately. Or a lot of times they had scabbards holding it back here. You see them, you'll see techniques where the saber is here and you see it's very difficult to see. Or say if I'm facing her here, that the saber is placed at a parallel to the ground and to her. So it's again, it's difficult. I don't know if you can see this. It's so difficult to see it. Sometimes, of course, we want to threaten the other person, but sometimes we want to hide it. Mostly we hide the saber. And uh, so you'll see these, these three kinds of things. One hidden here, two hidden behind, or three hidden behind the back. You'll see those techniques. Okay, so let's start off with neutralization uh, practice, okay? Now, there are, maybe we better explain, there are basically three ways that this tool is used. One is to poke. For instance, if Stephanie were to poke me, now a poke is just a, a, a surface thing. She could poke me in the shoulder, see, right, right in through there, poke me in the face, poke me in the neck. It doesn't take much in the neck, you see, just a little poke. You see, or you poke in the wrist, you see, then it would be very painful. You see, and the poke can also have a slight slice to it. A poke is a light, so fairly light surface kind of, uh, kind of a attack. Then there is a, a sort of a chopping motion. Now a chopping motion is a lot stronger. Now in the ancient times, people wore a lot of the soldiers wore a sort of a leather armor. And what the chopping motion is would be coming down a lot of times with two hands or horizontal, very big cuts to cut through something. A chop is a very heavy, big motion, okay? Then there's a slice. A slice. Now a slice, you see, for instance, if I had my hand out and she were to slice it, you see, it's just like you would slice, you know, a roast beef or something. It, it is meant to uh, not particularly sever the joint, but just to, to you know, cause the, 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 particularly for the tendons and ligaments and surface, to cause the person to drop. There's slices in the neck, very easy slices to the neck, slices to the legs, slices to this to the belly so we have poking which is light fast and that's the, mostly what a sword does a sword a double-edged sword usually pokes the saber tends to do less poking more chopping slicing and then the last one is called a thrust and a thrust is very big and strong. If, for instance, she sees an opening, she's just going to go right through it. It's like, boom. It's not like, like a poke. You see, she would be fully extended, whereas a thrust, you see, it would go right through and out the other side. Thrust is very strong. Okay. Now, so we have defenses against these, you see. Now, first, we'll use a defense against a poke. Let's say, here we are facing each other, and Stephanie is going to, uh, say, poke me towards the center of my body, right? Sort of the center. Now, one of the things you will notice as we go in and as we do this is the best place for me to be, say if she's out there, would be 
probably over here. Actually, it'd be the best place for me would be to be over here in relation to her, behind her, or over on this closed side. Very difficult for her to get anything, you see. Or if she's here, to come inside, inside of her. Inside, we, we, we try as best we can to get inside the saber. Now, when she goes to cut me, she's got to make a big movement, and that's not, that's not an, any big problem, but I, you know, I can, I'm inside so I can block it. Okay, so for this first poke to the center, we have what's called a, a neutralizing uh, slice. So as she comes in, I lead it in. You see, if she does it and I try to knock it, it can just pop right back in. She comes in, I, I knock it, it just pops back. So that is not a very good thing to do. So what, what we tend to do is when the poke comes in, we let it go by, let it come in, you see. Now I'm inside so I can attack her, you see. And you're gonna see this quite a lot. When the poke comes in, we neutralize, I neutralize it back. Then this sticks. Remember in, ta in Taiji, we use sticking technique. If I come inside and then let go, she can just cut me. So as she pokes in, I neutralize, sticking as I step in, and then I'm in there first, and I cut up and slice up into her. This is a, called an upper cutting motion. It's sort of like just opening the, the center of the body up. Now, if, for instance, she has uh, the other foot forward, say this foot forward, and she's poking in towards my center, I also can neutralize to this direction. Now, she's closed up, but my, but my saber's over there someplace. So it's very difficult for me to attack her in this fashion. So we use, again, I want her by me. So I let her come by, and then I just spin around and cut, you see? So as the cut comes in, you see, just join, lead, and cut her. So you'll see this sort of spinning techniques happening where you go in and by and through. Okay, now the, another technique for, for uh, the poke is when she pokes to my center, is I neutralize back. Now you see she's extended. I'm out of the range. So then what I do is she's weak holding this. See, it's, it's holding this up. It's fairly heavy, and so she's not, you know, the opponent, it's, it's heavy. It's, it'd be easier to manipulate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just flick it over, you see. For me, this is just a little wrist flick, and now I can come back and cut her wrist off. You'll see this technique happen. So you get back, flip over, and then cut somewhere along the body. Okay, so, um, so those are the, the main ways we deal with poking, uh, and thrusting is pretty much the same thing. Now, for chopping, a chop is a very strong... Now, let me say something. This weapon is generally sharp only about this portion. This is very, very sharp, and it gets a little less sharp as it comes here. And then down here, it's not sharp at all. This piece is used mostly for blocking. We wouldn't want to block with this piece because it would be sharp and would dull our, our, our cutting surface. So, he, and we use the side a lot for neutralizing things. You see, when she poked in, you see here in this case, see when I, here I'm using the side of my blade against hers. When she came in here, she poked in, see, I draw in and I'm using the side of my saber against hers. Now, when she goes, say, for instance, she comes to chop my neck around. This is a big, strong movement. Now, this is going to be tough, right? What am I going to do? I can't neutralize it because it's coming down. So what we have to do, this is not particularly Tai Chi principles, but what we would do is we use a, either block here, a block here, this is a very strong, we call this like a shed structure, very strong structure. So if you come, let's come over on this side, we can maybe see here. So again, I'm, I'm supporting my wrist. This is very strong. Now, if you notice the shape of this, 
when her when she comes down, the cut comes down, it is going to go away from my hand. If she comes in and I were to block this way, well then of course it would just come down onto me. You see? So the shed roof, as for a lot of the different chopping techniques, you'll notice that it's, it's faced away from the body and a very nice strong structure. Because there are techniques to the neck, the neck is an exposed, easily exposed part. They did, you know, it's, it's, there was a lot of attacks to the neck. Okay, the same thing if she comes with a reverse cut to this side. You see, it's a bit tricky this way, right? So what I would use is a back roof. Still the roof is going away from me and I'm still supporting it but it's behind me. Sometimes if say she's cutting me in the back of the neck you see I can also use protection in the back. You see this, is, this, this gives me nice protection against a lot of different cuts around the back so you'll notice those cuts. Um, now there's also a, the slicing techniques the slicing techniques one is, say if I have my wrist out and she goes to cut my wrist, I just get it out of the way. So a lot of the things we try and do is get out of the way. Now, if say I've gone, I say I, I get out of the way and she comes up to attack my neck, you see, I can block this way. So if we come, if we face in this direction, so here, so she goes to cut my wrist, I get it back, she goes for my neck, you see? So this again is a very strong structure. And then what I have, she's extended, I just go ah, press into her. We have, in Tai Chi, we have uh, pushing motions. We have push where we push the opponent. And this is a push, this is called push. So once you, sometimes when, if say, uh, you were, say we were here, we were in together, you'll see this a lot, in particularly in, uh, you know, movies that use sword work, all of a sudden, wham, they push somebody out. Wham! And it, it's a very, it can be a very effective, you know, if somebody's on the edge of a cliff, you know, bam, off they go flying off. Um, so we have that, those techniques to see. And um, you'll notice also uh, when we're in close, now a lot of times that I'll be doing things that we, when we get in close, sometimes you don't have the, this, the cutting edge. So, um, for instance, say she's going to hit me, she can hit with the, the pommel edge. It goes to particularly the temple or to the ribs. Say this, the, this is used, you know, used into the rib. So if she goes to hit in the temple, a lot of times I can use this hand to block and this hand to strike. You'll, you'll notice that. You'll see that in, in quite a few. We also, there's times where we knee, when we're in close, we can knee. We can also kick slightly back, you know, when you move back and kick. So all of the techniques that we have in uh, Tai Chi, all of the, the foot, the knee, the hip, arms, uh, can also be applied into and used for this weapon. Okay, so I think that's... Um, I think that's about what we'll do. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Thank you. And um, maybe if you give me this, uh, that um, one with the, uh, the sort of slender one. I uh, know the other one with the, yeah. I like this, this weapon. Thank you. This is a nice, this is a nice balance, you see. Very nice weapon. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to, I'm going to go through the form. The first time, I'm going to go through a couple of times. The first time what I'm going to do is basically just go through and call out the names of the movements. I'll tell you the names. And um, now, in this, in this class, I know you are not going to be able to learn all of these movements. But in conjunction with the Sabre class that is up on the web at www.gilmanstudio.com. On the web, I have this course and it's all broken down into little pieces. With this tape, you should be able to master this form. All right? But I wanted you to see, uh, quite get an interest in, in the saber and um, 
It's a beautiful weapon and one of my favorites. It's sometimes called the tiger because it's big and a big, strong weapon, as opposed to the double-edged sword, which is called the dragon, which is a little more subtle. Okay, so let me start out, and I'll go through slowly and easy. Now, this form can be done very quickly. It can be done, you know, when I do demonstration a lot of times, I do it very fast. It could take maybe 30 seconds uh, to go through. Uh, there's 37 movements in this form, uh, which can go very fast. But in order to practice it, to learn it, to see it, we'll go through nice and easy like we generally do with our Tai Chi, our regular Tai Chi forms. But all the same principles apply, keeping the head up, moving from the center. It's not, we're not just using our arm. Every motion comes from the center. Everything that happens here is the center is moving, it's not the arm. And if you look closely, you'll see that it's the center moving, not the arm. The, the saber can fall, but any time it moves in any direction other than just straight down, uh, it's, you'll make sure it's the center doing it. Okay, so I will uh, go through, call out the names of the movements, and I'll do it facing you, um, because First I'll face you and then I'll do it the other direction because mostly it's, it's, uh, the form goes on this plane from, from right to left. There's a little bit going forward, but mostly it goes from right to left. And so you'll be able to, to see most all of the techniques. Now we, we start off just as if you were having your hand like so. And of course, you wouldn't want the point, the sharp, sharpened edge facing you, so you just hold it outward. This is commencement of Tai Chi. Now, the first couple of movements don't really have much of an application, a little bit, but mostly it's sort of getting ready and getting facing your opponent. So the same stances as in our Tai Chi solo form. We use a, a little greeting, sort of a little focus. We take the right hand and place it on the, on the left, and just focus our attention for a moment, and then relax. So this is commencement of Tai Chi Saber. Sink. Step up to form seven stars. Retreat to ride a tiger. Step to the left, change saber hand. Cut horizontally to the right. Cut horizontally to the left. Circle to the left and upper cut. Jump backward and push. Circle to the right and upper cut. Circle to the left and push. Turn and cut overhand. Fair lady works at shuttles. Press forward diagonally. Turn and cut overhand. Fair lady works at shuttles. Press forward 
diagonally. Turn and chop downward. Golden pheasant stands on one leg. Turn around and cut overhand. Spin the saber to the left and right. Step to the left and change saber hand. Separation of the right foot kick. Hit a tiger at left. Hit a tiger at right. Right foot kick with sole. Strike opponent's ears with both fists. Change saber hand and chop downward. Golden pheasant strikes forward. Snow covers the head. Turn around and cut overhand. Retreat and parry to the left. Left and right double wheel. Dragon jumps. Fair lady works at shuttles. Press forward diagonally. Horizontal sweeping cut. Step to the left, change saber hand. Conclusion of Tai Chi Saber. All right, see, it's built up a lot of nice energy, right? Plus, uh, now please, in the studio, uh, we have a small studio here, so I can't really express fully the dynamics. This form can be very big, can be very big. Um, in here, I tend to um, feel a little more restricted, so um, c'est la vie. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is go in the other direction. So you'll see sort of the other side of the movements from a different, you'll see the movements from a slightly different angle. Excuse me. And then what I'm going to do is call out sort of what we're doing. So remember, uh, as, we, as Steffi and I, you know, demonstrated, there's a neutralization, there's cutting, there's slicing, there's blocking. And I'll, I'll call, call those out so that you can see them kind of more clearly as we go through. I'm not going to be too specific about where the feet are going. You can pick that up and that's all on the web course, you know, where all of that is going. So let's go through it again and um, I'll just talk a little bit more about what's happening. Okay, I'm going to back up here a little bit. You need a little more room in the front and you need a little more room on the right. So when you're practicing, when you go into practice, you need a little more room in the front and a little more in the back. Okay. So here, we're just comfortably standing and relaxed. Then, gathering the energy into the right leg, step up. Here, I can be hitting something with the pummel, if I was in close. This could be a pummel hit. 
followed by a punch. Huh? Retreat to ride a tiger. Here could, could be a block downward. I could be blocking with the pummel, knocking something down. I could be blocking with the inside of the saber blade. But generally speaking, we're just sort of, this is preparatory to, to the movements. Retreat to ride a tiger. Next. Sink, step to the left, and change saber hand. So here, the saber is hidden, it's comfortably at the waist. Then, stepping out into the side, this is a big sweeping, cutting, slicing motion. The sharpened edge is in front of my body and I've gone right past and by the person, sliced all along here. You see? Then, gathering energy into the right foot. This, if I'm in close, I'm gonna grab the person's hand that has the saber and then cut their waist. You see? They're poking inward, neutralize back. Stick, step inside, and uppercut. Okay? This is stick and uppercut. This is a beautiful, very strong motion using the waist. Then I'm at, my leg is being attacked. I get it out of the way, change, and push the person away. Push. Okay, then cutting a wrist behind me. Grab somebody's hand and uppercut. Come underneath, this is a delicate slice upward underneath through the crotch area. The, there's another poke, neutralize, stick. And this uppercut is just going to come up through the body. This is a very strong upward sweeping cutting motion. Then, somebody's behind, we turn. The saber is now hidden behind me. And cut out, you see? From here, it's just cut right out, cutting down. And this hand threatens, threatens, or distracts. We don't let the saber get behind the body. You don't want the saber to get behind it. Leave it at your waist level. The point also always faces the opponent. I wouldn't be, for instance, if my opponent was there like this or like this. You want to keep the threat up. If they can see it, you want to have it pointing. Plus, any little move, if, it's, if, I'm, if my opponent is there and my saber point is over there, I have to swing it around. Bigger motion here, just a little, a little easy motion, which I am now going to do. Follow this with that. Right there. So this is very, you say, the energy wants to slide down there. I, I used to think about it like, like a mercury tube, like you had a tube of mercury and you go funk, funk, and with this it's a funk. Yeah, it just whishes down there. So then there's a big chop, block, stepping sideways, grab a hold here, it's hidden behind, and here, using the body to chop downward. Chop downward. Okay. It's very, very strong. My whole body is behind this motion. Chop. There's a poke coming toward my center. Neutralize it. And this motion is very, it's a, it's a big attack, a very fast pressing attack. It's called press. The neutralize comes in and then the press happens. Okay, now we're going to repeat this. Turn and chop, poke, block, grab, cut, neutralize, press. Very strong. Next, somebody's trying to cut my leg from the back. Get it out of the way and chop down on their arm and here, this, this could also come down through the body, through
through the shoulder. It's a big motion because we have the whole weight of the body chopping downward. Chop downward. Now there's a neutral, there's a poke coming to the center. Neutralize it and poke back. Then the poke comes to my center. Neutralize it around. Now if I had more room, I'd be, I could go inward more, but I'm going to stay in place here. Come around and slice and cut. Next, that flipping over motion I showed you, that we flip. Remember when, when Stephanie poked, we flipped over. This is called spin the saber to the left. And this motion gets to be quite fun. called spinning the saber. Spin the saber to the left and right. Step to the left, change saber hand. Now here, there's somebody's like uh, punching or something. Now we're in close. So I block and kick. Hit a tiger. They're hitting me up towards the temple. I block, strike their forehead with the pummel and then punch. They're coming on this side, block with this hand, and strike with this pummel edge. Knocking something down and kicking. Knocking something down and striking. And chopping down once more. Now I'll show you this whole section from the front in a minute. Then once more, golden pheasant. Snow covers the head. Here, the, the attack is coming from the side, back, block. Circle around and cut. The poke comes in, neutralize back. Cut across the body. This is a beautiful movement uh, that it's, it's neutralized and cut. It has this beautiful kind of figure eight motion. Neutralize and cut. Grab, step in, grab a hand and uppercut, coming low. Once more, neutralize. This time I'm going to really cut up and under something. You see? Then Step in and uppercut. The attack comes to the leg and slice. The, the neck is being chopped. We block, grab, cut. The poke is coming in. We neutralize it to the side and press. The poke is coming in, which I take to this side. Step around and cut. Then step to the left, change saber hand, and we're finished ending up. Over. So you can see that this form is moving you know, quite a bit to the right side. Now, um, there's a, God, there's so much in there, isn't there? That uh, pretty, there's a lot. But I wanted to show you, let me talk a little bit, let's do this, um, this section here facing you from <clears throat> Come here. turn and chop downward. So they're going for the leg. We get the leg out of the way and chop down. Now this technique, this neutralize, this is a neutralize and a and uh, lead the energy. I'm taking the person's sword and leading it to the side. Then, just by extending, I thrust. This is a thrust, thrust out. Very strong thrust to the upper body. So it's just guide. You see, and I've created this torque and twist in my whole body. And then ha, it just straightens up and the energy comes out. It's a very lovely motion. 
Then the poke is coming in here. So we, as I showed you before, we, if I were, say if I was back a little bit, I'll come in a little bit more. Okay. So w the energy's over here, the person's there. So what I'm going to do is spin around, come around to the side of them. In, for the sake of the form and for the sake of room, we could do this all in the same place, you see. Just spin around here. And coming. Spinning the saber, as I demonstrated, this hand, now, that reminds me, a lot of times, most of the time, you have one hand fairly close to the other when you're working in fairly close, because this would be easy target to get cut. Mostly they want to cut your saber hand, but the other hand, if you got cut, it wouldn't be nice. So we keep them, a lot of times we keep them together, or sometimes we threaten. If we've done a technique, we, we threaten. But it is a target. So in this case, you see we're doing this technique, we keep these hands here. Step to the left, change saber hand. As you can see, it's hidden. Then kick. So this movement is nice. You gather the energy into the right side. This hand circles up, and as a blocking strike comes up to the temple, and then this hits into the ribs. It's very much the same. It's a really lovely, beautiful circular motion. So here I'm neutralizing something down and striking upward. And then this comes in. This is what we call lie energy, squeezing energy. Hit a tiger at left. And then hit a tiger at right. It's pretty much the same, only has a little more of a flow to it. So here the block comes in and strike. Now this is... hit a tiger. Now this one is, is quite interesting that if we're in fairly close, the person's kicking my lower, lower body. So I just slap it down. Okay? Slap the foot down as I get back and follow with a kick. They're pushing in. We neutralize down and strike upward. Chain saber hand and chop downward. This chop can also have a little more of an extension. It can cut out more. You can see when you're practicing, as opposed to here dropping down this way, it can also have a stretching, stretching out movement, followed by the poke, OK? So, so after chop down, another we repeat again. <clears throat> Good. So um, <clears throat> that's the form from sort of two sides. And I think if you tape this, have the opportunity to tape it, you can examine it a little more closely. <clears throat> but I also want to show you, while we're doing this, just a few solo drills. Um, things that you can do to use this just for yourself to practice. Little routines, little parts, like I, like I was just showing you. For instance, a, a good one is uh, spinning the saber. So you hold the saber in your right hand. And basically, you see, it has a sweep over kind of feeling. So the whole body, you see, the pummel comes up. So you sweep then cut back and cut down. So you sweep left. I, I, I could be cutting back here and cutting down. So sweep, cut, down. Sweep, cut, down. So this is very good for loosening. You can do it particularly focusing on the wrist. You can do it focusing on the elbow. You 
can do it focusing on the shoulder. Now this becomes quite a bit bigger. This same motion can become more or less a cutting downward. Make sure you have plenty of room to, to do this, right? Cut backward. Yeah, so spin the saber is uh, one of the favorite movements, which is very nice. Another very nice uh, exercise pattern <clears throat> is if you have your weight, have your weight on the right foot. What we're going to do is pull in, first part, pull in, pull in, pull in. So here we get twisting. This is very good for, for the, uh, I can feel this in the upper arm, twisting, twisting. I'm working on strengthening balance. See here, all the weight goes onto one leg. Okay, so that's one. Two is we're going to basically let the point fall. As it falls, we replace the right foot and come stretching under. Okay. One, two. One, two, etc. So actually, uh, we're sort of running out of time, so I don't, this, you can take any one of these motions and just sort of break it up a into a kind of a fun little pattern and make a really good exercise for yourself. Okay, so let me just go out, we'll just finish, and I'll just do the form in a nice steady speed, not breaking it up, but doing it in a nice steady speed. And, I, and so then Anna will um, take us out whenever she has to. So as always, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And I hope you enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun, a lot of exercise, all right? <clears throat>